Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. I know today is um, normally not the time that we usually do our show, but uh, we are on a little bit early with uh, none other than Jerry Yang today. We're going to dive into some stuff with him. So we hope that you can join us. And if you are live with us, please make sure that you share. Um, we are going to do a giveaway a little bit later. So um, if you're on live with us, please let us know where you're watching us from and please share this as well. We want to make sure that we, uh, you know, reach as many people as possible. Um, again, if you're on, let us know where you're watching us from. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Kelly and I always enjoy kind of engaging with our guests and then engaging with all of you live. We know it's early. It's Saturday. It's 9 a.m. where we are. And so wherever you are, good morning, maybe good afternoon to some of you. Um, we'll get started in a little bit here. We're just kind of sharing this into our personal. Um, so just give us a couple minutes. I hope you guys are doing well on this day. We're almost ready. I can't seem to share onto my pro. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm just looking for this. And just so all of you who's been following um, our show and know that I've had issues with my Wi-Fi, I uh, I got the list this like mesh kit. The other day I made a post on Facebook and some of the people answered and they were like, get this thing or we know we've got this and it worked and I got it. My husband installed it yesterday. So do let me know if I'm still blurry throughout. I think that would be awesome. Um, that way I can kind of see if I need to get new stuff or if this thing actually works because it was like $200 and like $50 to kind of um, – get this little hub thing to like be right next to like my desk so then it'll catch the wi-fi quicker but y'all let me know if you can see me clearly throughout the entire show like if i'm blurry please comment in the section go olivia you're extremely blurry get wi-fi or something you know so that i know um but yes hello it's hello it's kind of scratchy do you hear that or is it just me, mm -hmm. it's just me. okay yeah It is static. -y. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. The audio is a little bit. Is it me or you? Um, mute. Why well, don't you? Okay. Yeah, it's you. Cause I don't hear it anymore. <laughs> now that they can see us, they can't hear us. <laughs> it's one or the other. Is it static? -y back on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna mute myself, and we can kind of see if they, because I think it's, I think it's on your end. Is it? Is your mic close to where? Maybe too close. Maybe move your mic a little bit. Possibly. No, it's a uh, same routine. Oh, we are. Can you still hear it? Oh, uh, lots of static. Um, I can hear it. Yeah. Bear with us one minute. No, we're not going to say goodbye to Olivia. <laughs> we are trying to adjust and figure this out. If she can get her uh, bandwidth to be working right, she can get her sound to be working right. <laughs> we are going to get this fixed. If you are joining us, let us know where you are joining us from. Thank you for joining us so early. Um, we, again, as Olivia said earlier, we aren't typically this early. Um, however, um, our guests, this works really good with our guests. And he's got a restaurant to operate. So um, we're here a little bit earlier. So thank you for joining us. Can you hear me now, Kelly? Or is the static still there? Yeah, the static is still there. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this mic off and see if that stops it. Okay. 
Hi to Los Angeles, <laughs> Minnesota. I think Minnesota is like our number one state of watchers. So we greatly appreciate Minnesota. Okay, how about now? Still there? It, the static is not there. But it's, it's not good, huh? so it's like a little, you know, just, I mean, it's better than the static. Did you take your mic off? That's what you did, huh? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. It's still, it's, it's better than the static for sure. That's so weird. Mm -hmm. I changed nothing. Okay. Is the static back? Do you yep. still hear the static? No, it's perfect. Oh, it's so weird. Okay. So I, I just, you just, just unplug it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All righty. Yay. Okay, guys, thank you for keeping me on track <laughs> with my with my technology. You'll know I have like a lot of issues with my stuff. So thank you. Um, okay, so are we ready, Callie? Yes. Yeah, and there's just, just a quick note. Please do share this live. So we have one of Jerry Yang's um, books um, all in. And so we are giving away one of his books to anybody who shares during the live. We will go back after and uh, uh, select a winner. Um, that's basically it. So please do share so that more people can join us bright and early this morning. It's 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, or I guess like 9.08 a.m. Um, but <laughs> it is a little bit earlier. So thank you for joining us. All right. So uh, obviously, thank you. And uh, thank you for tuning in. And welcome to All That Talk Talk Show. I am your co-host, Olivia. I'm Callie. And on today's show, we have someone who has kind of been um, inspirational in some sense to um, some of us. And so I'm really excited to kind of dive in with him. But before we get started, you know, we do our usual um, introduction and things of that nature. So uh, a couple things before we dive in. We do want to talk about our GoFundMe for the Finding Love with Charm series. Um, we know that this is a lot to ask, but again, this, you know, nothing comes free. The show has to kind of um, really uh, be responsible for all the funding for that particular series. And we do really want to um, make sure that we get the last couple of contestants to charm and get some in-person dates happen. And that doesn't come without a cost. And so, um, you know, as some of you may know, we put a lot of different things into place to make sure that uh, we get the the amount the right amount of funding to make that happen. And that includes the GoFundMe. That also includes merchandise on our website. And so if you haven't purchased a shirt, we have a couple of different um, designs on there. Uh, the purchasing of these shirts would really help us with the production of just our show in general. Um, and of course, the Finding uh, Love with Charm series. And Kelly and I have already begun talking about different projects that we wanna work on for 2022. And so, um, you know, the funding, like your purchase would, would just help us tremendously on all of those efforts that we're trying to uh, make happen. So um, that's all I've got for right now. And then I also want to talk a little bit about we've got a special episode next week as well. Um, you know, we have seen a lot on the news about domestic violence and things of that nature. And, and uh, Callie and I really didn't know what kind of angle we wanted to to tackle this. And so um, we have been really fortunate that we, um, you know, have talked to a couple of different people about how we want to approach this topic. Um, but we do want to talk about it because we think it is very important. And so we'll be diving into the impacts of domestic violence um, and what it has on children that's left behind. So we have two guests who um, unfortunately have lost both of their parents due to due to domestic violence joining us next week. And we'll be kind of just talking to them about their thoughts, feelings, um, just things of that nature. So it's going to be a very uh, deep conversation. So I hope that you guys can tune in and join us. Uh, but that's what we've got going on next week and overall in general. So Callie, I'll pass it over to you uh, unless there's anything else you want to add that I miss. And uh, let's introduce Jerry and get him on. Yep. So, of course, um, we have a special, special guest today, and he found time out of his busy schedule to make time for us. And so thank you so much. Um, but of course, we, we all know him as the Hmong poker player that won over $8.2 million at the 2007 WSP main event in Las Vegas. But he also has a degree in health psychology, um, and he gave away his winnings to three charities. Um, and we're really curious as to why he picked those charities. Um, and since then, he's opened 
multiple restaurants. And so he's done a lot of things where we are just really um, amazed by. And, you know, mm-hmm. the thing today is, is truly taking chances and, and going after the things that you really want and believing in yourself. And so with that, please help us welcome Jerry Yang. Hey, Jerry. Hello. No, don't shut up. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> How are you? I am good. Good, Back good. In front, uh, this is uh, this is my life, so I have to be here. Yeah, definitely. And so are, are you up prepping early? What what time does the restaurant open? Most yeah, most of the days I usually uh I usually get to my restaurant around seven or eight and just kind of start prepping, getting things ready. There's just a lot of stuff to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for making time for Kelly and I. We know that you are really busy with the restaurant and just life in general. So thank you for making time for us to kind of chat. So it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right. So shall we get started? Um, all right. So we are going to go way back, way before your wedding. I really want people, I know that, you know, we have talked to you before and, you know, kind of learned a few things about you, but a lot of people haven't. Um, and so, and also if you, if anybody has questions, please definitely um, uh, ask them and we will try to do um, what we can at the end. Okay, Jerry. So I we, we know you were born in Laos in 1967 and you spent four, your family spent four years in a refugee camp in Thailand. And so what do you remember about life in the refugee camp? You know, um, to just kind of uh, backtrack just a little bit, I was about seven, and my father was actually, um, uh, he was like the, he was like the chief village, you know, the, the chief of the village uh, that we lived in. And so when we heard that the communists had uh, uh, arrived at a nearby town, because uh, my father fought in the uh, secret war with General Vang Pao also, and he knew the, he knew how the common soldiers would uh, treat the, the people in the village. Once they get to the village, he kind of knew what they what they would do to the people. So he was very scared, and obviously he gathered everybody together and say, "Hey, we need to head to Thailand. Otherwise, you know, uh, our lives might be in great danger." And so. Uh, Everybody agreed, except uh, a couple of uncles in the town. They didn't want to leave because they want to stay behind and they wanted to kind of take over our livestock and anything that we, you know, leave behind. They, they wanted those. So uh, to make long story short, we actually uh, <clears throat> got caught on, you know, on our way to Thailand. We got caught by the communist soldiers and we were sent to this town called Nang Chang and we were uh, warned uh to not to leave and if we leave they would try to track us down and bury us wherever they you know they find us so my father made a promise but two weeks later we obviously we arrived in thailand and you know living in thailand i was i was just a kid um <clears throat> obviously condition the condition was very very poor i remember i was i had a bloated um, bloated tummy and uh there were times that I went to the restrooms and and many worms will come out, you know, that sound disgusting, but there were a lot of kids back then that actually died from that. And I was very fortunate to uh, not to die. <clears throat> but to answer your question, it was it was a very horrible um, uh, condition to, to live in in Thailand. And so um, if, if you're open to talking about this, I know you have I think, two siblings that did pass away in, in Laos or Thailand. Is that correct? Thailand, yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, I lost a, uh, I lost a brother and a sister in Thailand. And yeah, whenever I talk about it, <laughs> forgive me, I get a little emotional here. But not just, not just that, but I, many of so a few of my cousins that I grew up with, uh, playing every day and and then one day they're just like they're just gone you know uh, again because of the condition 
uh, the living condition there, the food, the water, of course. Uh, so, but uh, there was one time that my father said I actually passed out and they thought I was, they thought I was dead. And for like about 20 minutes and they were, you know how Hmong people are when somebody passed out and no pulse, no, no uh, vital signs whatsoever, they would try to dress up that person, you know, you know, you know, for, for the burial. And they were getting ready to do that um, for me. And so, but luckily I came back and they were very shocked. So here I am today. Do you think that that's I, <laughs> so like so that was the first all in of my life? <laughs> yeah. So so is is that just you know like you, you said you were passed out for twenty minutes? Is it just because there's so many like people die so much that it's just the expectation? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, because there were so many people that died before me, you know. I think it was 19, I believe it was 1977 when I when that happened to me. Mm -hmm. And so then, um, so, so your, your family came to the U.S. Can you talk a little bit about, because I think you said that you were about 11 when you came to the U.S. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what you remember? Yeah, and there were people back then, there were people that were um, applied to go to France. Uh, some people went to, they applied to go to Canada. Uh, some people actually even applied to go to Bolivia, you know, and, 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 uh, <clears throat> but my father said, you know, I, my father said, you know, I fought for the Americans during the secret war and I feel like I have to go to America. So my father made up his mind, not, not not to go to like obviously France, Canada, but um, he chose America. And so we waited for like four long years. And I remember that one day um, uh, they called my father's name. I remember I was at the well with a couple of, bucket of uh, buckets and I was going, going to go there to fetch some water. And on my way back, I was carrying uh, you know, this bamboo where you, um, you put one bucket in the front and one bucket in the back. And I was carrying that. I, I was about 11 and a half or so then. And I heard they say, okay, the following people, please come down to, for an interview to go to America. And they call my father's name. Because Yang is usually, they save it till the very last to call, you know. So while they called all these names, I didn't hear my father's name. I was like, oh please call my father's name and finally they they called my dad <laughs> i was i was so um i was so happy so I, what i did was i threw down i threw i threw down both buckets on the floor, on the ground i didn't even care about the water <laughs> i didn't even care about the water i just ran back I ran back and I, um, I remember we lived in a apartment, but there, the, there were high stilts that, 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 that hold the apartment up. And there were a lot of people underneath the apartment. I announced to everybody, Hey, they call my father's name. Now we can go to America. And so, uh, we went for the interview and my father passed the interview, but you know, Olivia and Kelly, when I won the World Series of Poker, they asked, they asked me one question. Is this, is this the most, the greatest day of your life? And I remember saying to them, this day can never compare to the day that, the day that they call my father's name. So here I am today. I am so sorry. You're totally fine. No, yeah. yeah. You're going to make me cry too. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like there. That was, that was the most amazing day of my life. I mean, winning yeah. 8.25 million, that could never be compared um, to the day that when they announced my father's name. Yeah. So, what did you like? What? So, what was the because um, what was America? 
you know, like the idea of America, right? Like, is it just like a release from your sufferings? Like, what, what did you think, you know, being in America would do? I was, as a kid, I was always hungry in Thailand. I was always hungry. And I remember one day I, I, I wanted to come to America, not because of, I wasn't really afraid of dying. I wasn't really afraid of the communists because I didn't know very much about the communists. I was afraid of starvation. I was afraid of just not having hope. Just Just, um, just basically have some, have something to eat. And that's why I chose the restaurant business. Because back as a kid, I, I had this vision, I had this dream. Oh, someday when I get to America, I want to own a restaurant. I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want. Nobody has to tell me anything. And that is why I made that dream come true. Is becoming a restaurant owner, and I'm, like every, you know, whatever I want to eat, I just tell my chef, "Hey, can you make me this?" Or if I feel like I want to make something, I just make it on my own and just enjoy it without any fear, any hesitation, if you will. And uh, back then, you know, we lived in the camp. They every three days they would send the food to to, to the camp. And there were days that they were late and the food uh, got spoiled very bad, but we didn't have a choice. We had to eat it. And maybe that's probably why many kids develop, uh, um, you know, like a bloated stomach due to, due to warmth inside, you know, their tummies. So, Coming to America was was more than just just I think more than just freedom. I think it's more than it's it's more about hope. Hope it's a good thing. Because without hope, hope everything dies. Yeah, I mean just listening to you talk about your story, Jerry, I think it's so near and dear to many of our hearts, especially because, you know, like, you know, now we're so privileged, right? Like, like they try everything they can just to survive. And, you know, I applaud our parents so much just for like coming to the States, not knowing how to speak English and really trying to thrive to make sure that we have the opportunity. So it definitely resonates with me a lot. Yeah, ma. Yeah. Uh, one reason, didn't and many people ask me, "Hey, you, you have a, you have a little bit of money already, and you have a You, why you work so hard? Why do you get into the restaurant where, uh, when the restaurant is one of the toughest industries in America?" Uh, and I said to them, "You know, yeah, I guess I can just retire on my winning and just, you know." Um, just live on the interest earned from the bank and I, I would be okay. Even my children should be okay. Uh, but I, I told them, you know, it's, it's not about the money. It's more about uh, being an example to my children, you know, having a restaurant. Yes, they see me work every day. And I sometimes I ask my children to come and help me. And throughout the years that they helped me, it has molded them to become uh, the individuals that they should, you know, and not just say, hey, because my father has money, uh, I, I shouldn't have to work, you know? And, uh, and because he's paying my tuition or my room and board at school, uh, I should just take, you know, an easy ride. So having the restaurant actually helped my children to, to realize what hard work is. And nothing is free in America. There's no free lunch. You got to work for what you have, you know? And so um, that's my response to, to the people that uh, 
ask me why I got into the restaurant business. It is hard work. So speaking of work, I do want to just touch into, you know, you have a master's degree in health psychology, um, which I don't know if a lot of people know that. Can you, like, how, how did you get into health psychology? Uh, there's a little staticky again, a uh, little static. I don't know if you heard that, but I actually heard on my, on my, on my end. Um, you know, growing, when I came to America, I knew the education would be the best, you know, uh, path to, to success. So, uh, you know, I grew up, remember in the 80s, people drive, people would drive like Toyota Supra, Celica. If you have one of those two cars, you pretty much can get a girl, okay? <laughs> and me, I was driving a 1975 uh, Datsun 210 station wagon that my uncle gave it to me. And all the seats were torn. So nobody, I was like combing my hair. I was wearing a tie to school. So I was a typical nerd, geek, you know? And I remember Wei Dun Tsai Musiong, she was like, she was like, they were very pretty. Everybody liked her. Um, and I remember we had algebra together and she was sitting in front of me and knew to do this copy, which I won't work on it. And then she turned around and then I knew at that point she wanted to see my homework. So we did it. And then she wanted to see my homework. So we did it. And then she wanted so, uh, so I actually, I, I graduated from my high school valedictorian in my class and uh, I went to college and uh, I did pretty good. I wanted to become a medical doctor actually and I took the MCAT. I took, uh, um, you know, I applied to med school. Uh, they allowed me to apply to 10 without paying the the, the fee and I applied to 10, I, I got accepted to eight. I mean, including Cornell and also Brown University, uh, Johns Hopkins, you know, so quickly, uh, but I chose to go to Loma Linda University, which is down south right, in Southern California. And, but I postponed it one year and then I never, I never gone back. And I did go back to Loma Linda, but I, I chose to go into um, psychology instead. So. Um, I guess I was too burned out from college and high school. But my father was very disappointed that I didn't go into med school. And so I, I went and I got my master's degree in uh, health psychology and just uh, also my uh, administrator license in nursing home. So that's what I did. I managed a fairly large uh, nursing home in Southern California for about 18 years, you know? And uh, and then I won the World Series of Poker and then quickly resigned and I just came back and be a restaurant owner. I don't know if that was a di good decision, but uh, uh, so far it's, uh, I, think, I think so. I think I made a good decision. So, so what got you into into poker? So, in, in your book, I need to talk about. I don't know why it's so static. <laughs> it's like, can you hear me? Okay. Olivia, do you want to try? Maybe it's my end. I don't know. Maybe. Can you mute yourself? All right. I think what Kelly was trying to say was, <laughs> is it worse on my end? It's there, yeah, I don't know, but go ahead. Jerry, can you hear me though? I I can hear you, but whenever you talk, the static is it's on. It, it, it gets... Okay, all right. Well, we'll we'll try to see if we can ask you this question. But when you entered the two thousand and seven World Series of Poker main event, you know you you had shared that you had just started playing poker, right? So what kind of got you into playing poker? So I remember one night, um, one evening, I had some relatives coming down to Temecula. That was the town that my father, when I bought my 
first house in Southern California. And with the some of my relatives came from Green Bay um, and Fresno. They visited me. They went to Disneyland and San Diego Zoo. So they uh, need a place to to crash. So they 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 call me son. They say, oh, um, can we come by and just stay with you for a couple of nights because we're down here visiting the zoo and in Disneyland. I said, sure, come on. I got plenty of room. So they came and we, you know, we just kind of sat and talked. And I remember, I think it was around 11 and I, they were pretty tired. So they all went to bed and um, my wife and I sat on the couch and we, I took the remote from her because she, she usually watch up uh, the Home and Garden channel, HGTV. You're muted. I don't know. Let's see. I think the static may be from Jerry's end because now okay. I don't hear it anymore. I also don't hear it. It's like it's exacerbated by him being on. Let me just check in with him. Yeah. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> Some tech issues this morning. I didn't tell the computer you know? For real. I know. Okay, Jerry, we've got you back. Uh oh, there we go. You're back on. It's good. Okay, so um, going back to what I said, I was uh, my wife and I. We sit on the couch, and I took the remote from her, and I started flipping through the channel, and then I saw the World Series, the 2005 World Series of Poker main event being broadcast on on TV, and I was watching, and the more I watched, the more I got enticed. You know, and so, and as I as I watched the game going on, I kind of point to the TV and I said to my wife, I said, "Honey, I think I can do that." And I remember she turned to me and she gave me this very uh, disgusting look, and said, "You know, saying basically, you're not you're not going to go there." And so, having six children and you know a mortgage and a car payment, I guess she was uh in China, yeah. She was afraid that I might just like gamble the whole <laughs> or life savings too <laughs> into poker. But so a couple of weeks later, to make long story short, I bought a couple of poker books and they're pretty thick books actually. And I started reading and she saw me reading those books and she said, Those are not uh, some of your books that you've been reading. And I said, Well these are called Super system. I said, what is super system? Well, this one is super system written by Dwight Brunson, the godfather of poker. He is considered one of the best in the world. And the other one is the 1989 world champion, Phil Helmuth. And New New So oh my 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 wife was like <laughs> she was like so distraught and she said, Are you serious? Basically, she said, Are you serious? You're gonna get into poker. So I made a promise to her. I said, okay, this is what I would do. I would take 5% of my paycheck and I will only use that 5% to play. If I lose it, I wait till the next month. But if I win, I put that 5% back and I use my winning to, to play it. And to my surprise, I started winning. And so to make long story short, two years, you know, forward, fast forward two years in 2007, it was in May, and it was the last Saturday that they offer a uh, tournament that uh, if, you, if, you, if you win the tournament, you basically get a $10,000 seat into the main event in Vegas. And so I went and played. I put in my 225. It cost 225 to play, and we had 188 players that day, and I ended up beating everybody. You know, so I want, I want, I want this, I want the money. So the money is 10,000, but they give, they give you a choice. They gave me a choice. Hey, you have a couple of choices. You either take the 10,000, go home, forget about World Series of Poker, or allow us to use the 10,000 to buy the seat. And in July, you can go and play. So I was walking, I said, okay, give me, a, give me a couple of hours to think about it. So I was walking inside the casino for about a couple of hours. I didn't want to call my wife because I knew 
if I called her, she would say, you better take the 10,000 and get back home. <laughs> so I was thinking, because my mortgage back then was like 30, I think 33, 3400 a month. And I said, well, 10,000, that could pay, easily pay three, 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 more, three mortgage payments already. Maybe I should do that. But I didn't tell them, I just, I, I just told them, okay, what the heck, I just go to Vegas and take my chance. And um, luckily um, registered me. And so I went home, I said it to my wife. Um, surprisingly, she wasn't mad. She, <laughs> she wasn't that mad. She said, well, that's your dream. That's what you always wanted to do. Then just go. So, you know, that's it. So did you tell like any of your siblings? Like did your family know that you got into no, 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 no. that's a big no no right there. <laughs> I didn't tell my father, I didn't tell any of my siblings, because my dad was uh I mean we couldn't even play checkers. Chess, checkers, uh anything that has to do with cards, it's a big no no in my family. So my father didn't even know until I made, we went down to um, the last 27 players at the main event. And that's when I called my father. He didn't even want to talk to me. And I remember I talked to him on the phone and I said, I mentioned that I was in Vegas. Uh, the next voice that I heard was my brother because he, he just handed the phone to my brother. He didn't even want to talk to me. <laughs> And then what happened after that? Did you eventually talk to him? Yeah, so um, I went. I went to. Uh, I went to Vegas, and uh, you know, I went back to the casino that I wanted to see. And I said, you know, can you guys at least give me like, like room and board, give me a hotel get that I can stay? They said, no, we can't do that. So I went to another casino, local casino that, that I play there too, called Lake Elsinore Hotel Casino. And they said, yeah, Jerry, you, uh, you've been playing here, so we would be happy to do it for you. But uh, on one condition, you wear, you wear our shirt and you wear our cap. And so I said, sure, let's do it. So what they did was they got me a very, um, not the best hotel. I call it the Roach Hotel. If you read my book, there's, there's a chapter called the Roach Hotel, the Roach Motel. And it was, it was not the best, you know, room that I, I, I ever been into. And, but, you know, so after winning, after the winning the first series of poker, I, I, I thought about the, the movie Rocky. Remember Rocky, the movie Rocky, the boxer, uh, Rocky Balboa, and he fought with the Russian uh, champion. Rocky was training in this barn, this poor, you know, barn. And this other guy was training in the best, you know, the most sophisticated gym in the world, you know. And at the end, he beat, you know, he won, he won the fight. So. Wow, what if they had gotten me a nice hotel, you know, uh, and I might, something could have, you know, you know, but because they got me this uh, Roach Motel, I, I was humble, I was focused, uh, and who, I was there to, to do my job as a player and not just roaming around, having fun and, you know, enjoy the best time of my life. And that was the first time I, I went to Vegas, the very first time too. And so, yeah, so yeah, we, we, played, uh, we played for like, go, go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm, I'm a little scared to talk because it's like so sad, but I don't know what is going on. Um, but what I was going to say, oh my goodness, I, I can't even, <laughs> hang on one sec, I'm going to try to stop. Yeah, it's really odd. Okay. Can, can you mute, okay. Jerry? 
Okay. All right. Ooh, I feel like that's working now. Olivia, do you feel like that's working? Okay. So maybe when we ask a question, you just mute. Is that okay, Jerry? Can you hear us? Now? Okay. Um, so what I was gonna say was just that, you know, I I I love how you point that out about your um the the hotel because I I, I do feel like like sometimes like the hardships that you struggle through or your situation, stuff like that, that's what push you to keep working hard, right? It helps you to remember like, I don't wanna be in this spot again. And so thanks for just pointing that out. And so when you went to the, um, the main event in Las Vegas, you went by yourself. Like you didn't tell anybody, I guess, I think it was just your wife that knew that, right? Like nobody else in your family. So you went to it, like, were you expecting to win it? Or you just felt like I might as well go. I've already, you know, got a seat at the table. Like I might as well just go. What were you thinking? Hold on. Now you have to unmute. So for poker players, uh, one of I guess the, the the one biggest dream for any poker player is to play in the main event at the World Series of Poker, and that's a ten thousand dollar buy-in. Many 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 people would, I mean, they would do anything to play in that event. So for me, uh, I wasn't expecting to win. To be honest with you, I just wanted the experience i wanted to meet some of my poker idols if you will you know role models uh like phil ivy you know uh daniel negrano Dwight brunson donnie chan uh some of the world class you know the best players in the world i wanted to meet with them take photos with them i would have gone home anyway only maybe at kelly and, and being a happy man even though if i had not won i would have been happy so the first day that I played, guess who I met at my table? Toby Maguire, Spider-Man, was on my table. I was in C3, he was in C8, and he had this bodyguard, a couple of bodyguards actually behind him. And I said, this can't be real. I mean, out of thousands of tables at, at, the, at the main event, Toby Maguire is at my table. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like so starstruck. And I got my shades on, my cap on, and I was like standing at the guy like, the whole time, you know? And I couldn't even concentrate, but I said, I need to do well. I need to play my best. And so, but um, unfortunately, they toward the end of the night, and they, they, he got bust out, he got knocked out of the tournament. But the next day that I played, Chris Ferguson, which is, uh, he is a very, very good player, world-class player. And he is also like a poker celebrity, if you will. You know, he came to he play, came to play my table again. I was very um, very nervous. I didn't want to play against him because uh, he is just so good, you know. And so, but we kept playing, and I kept chipping up. You know, day after day, I would. Uh, I think the first day I finished, we started with twenty thousand chip. And I finished the first day with 99,700. And then on the second day, I went up to like 354,000. The, the third day, I got up to like 700,000. And then so I kept moving up on my chips, you know. But the fourth day, I had a, like, like a very, very bad day. I went back down to 300,000, you know. And I had to go all in at one point, and I said, but I got very, very lucky. I caught that one card that saved me, you know? So, oh my goodness, I thought I was gonna go home with nothing in my pocket, but uh, I won that hand and then that kept me, that boosted me. And finally, we made it to 27 players and each one of us uh, was guaranteed uh, $250,000 at that point, okay? If I had gone on, if I had got bust out, I would have gone 250,000 anyway, you know? So, that's when I called my dad, like I said earlier. Yeah. So, you called your dad to come and join you? Or, or like, what prompted you to call your dad? 
I think I think it's more like you must like you don't share about your right. You know, you I was I was just so so happy. You know, I just I mean I, I care about the money too, but more than that I want to share how much I money I have won or guarantee at that point. But just just the success that I had so far, I wanted to share with him. He was my body, he was my hero, he was the guy that you know, brought the, the people from my village to Thailand, and he was like a hero to me. And then he and I were very, very close, you know. So I wanted to share with him. And throughout my life, uh, he was like a best friend to me, my dad. And so he would be the first person for me to share with. But then when I, when I, he was happy to hear my voice. But when I started talking about that, I was in Vegas playing poker. The phone was handed to my brother. <laughs> He didn't want to have anything to do with me at that point. So I spoke to my brother. I said, hey, listen, um, go on the Internet, check out the World Series of Poker, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now I'm guaranteed 250000 Let dad know I would like him. I would like to fly him and mom over there to support me and just be happy with me. So my brother, I guess he you know, spoke to my dad, and finally, um, we got to talk a little bit on the phone, and I bought a couple of plane tickets to uh, to get my mom and dad to to come to Vegas. And then I sent a limo. Uh, I called the casino. They got me the motel. I say, hey, get the best limo you can find, and get my family into the limo, my kids, kids, and my wife, and bring them to Vegas. So at that point, uh, the casino had already um, uh, they. Um, because hold on, they, we had a lot of security that the you know, and so they got um, some some suites inside the real for each player. So, uh, security in you know. So they like the blue family. My 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 kids and my wife came. They were so happy. Oh, just the most wonderful time of of my life, I think. But. But again, they compare to the day that they called my father's name to come to America. So, so then, I say, yeah. So I made the final table. Obviously, I made the final table, um, and uh, the winner was guaranteed. If you get knocked out uh, ninth place, you would you would have gone. Uh, Five hundred and twenty-five thousand, something like that, you know. And so, if you won first place, obviously eight point two five. And I was the least experienced player at the table. Uh, many people thought I would not win. And I, I remember walking through the casino and I look at the board where they do all, all the betting, like who's gonna win. So if you wage more, you're gonna win. You know, if you say you go with Jerry Yang, I was like forty to one, I think. You know, a lot of people, like to Ling, maybe not even, I think less than 2% of the people um, uh, put a bet on me. So the rest they put on this guy from Denmark, uh, Philip Hyam, and then another gentleman is Lee Watkinson, he's a pro player. Uh, and then the other one is uh, uh, Tuan Lam from Canada. He finished second to me. And so, <clears throat> But I went with an all-in style. I went with, a, I've been studying my opponent, so I said, okay, the only way that I can beat these guys is apply pressure, you know, put a lot of pressure on them. Because uh, when you put pressure on people, you put them in a very, very tough uh, spot where they have to make quick decision. So that's what I did. And then I, I ended up knocking out, I think, seven out of the, the eight players at the table. So do you think that because you were, you know, the, the newbie, it was, you know, not, you didn't have the pressure so you can go any style that you wanted with how you're playing? Uh, you also have to pick your opponents carefully. You have to uh, depend on the opponent. Uh, and you also have to constantly study your your opponent, their style, and their body gestures. 
you know, how the way they breathe, the way they person lives, uh, you look at their eyes, uh, how they throw the chips to the, to, when they make the bed, how they throw the chips, uh, how they fold their arms or cross their legs, whatever it is, you use all of those um, to your advantage. And so I've been taking notes on, on some of the opponents, so I use that and I try to memorize that and I, I use that against them. So, and it worked out, I mean, but not just that, but you also have to have a lot of luck on your side also, you know. So it's a combination of all, everything, but obviously you got to have this, you got to have the, uh, you to study with your opponent, you know, constantly doing it at the table. Yeah. Because they too also change their style as you play. You, you don't want to be, you don't want to be a pattern that they can identify. You want to mix up your game, you know, back and forth. And again, it depends on the opponent, but uh, yeah, if you spot somebody that uh, keeps showing uh, a certain poker tells that you know, like let's say when they have a weekend, they might throw the chips really fast and very strong, you know? But if they have a strong hand, they might do it in a very uh, gentle, you know, fashion. And you have to watch out for, for those little clues, you see? And so, uh, that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so then let's talk about um, the moments leading up to like you winning. Like, what was it like? You know, and now your family's there, your dad's there, your brother's there, your 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 kids are there, your wife is there. What happens after that? Well, they they they, they would like to watch the like, the tournament of course. My father was there. My mother was there. Some people from my church came. Uh, some of my some of my relatives came, and you know, I just, I just, um, I think I wanted to win. Um, I think the money, I, the money would change my life. Hey, your five group family, family so cool. I do my best. I did my best, and I really tried. Best, but having my family there really gave me uh, call encouragement yeah? and the strength to really stay focused, especially my wife. She was there. She was very tired. But each time that I thought about her, I said, oh, I got to play my best because if I if I win this money, I will use the money for good and to support my family, obviously. Uh, you know? And so, so yeah, having my family there was, especially my father too, was a, uh, was really a blessing. And then when you won, like, what was that like? Like, did it feel like, um, I mean, I'm sure it felt unreal, but like, can, can you just talk about that? Like, like you know, the, the you and the last person, like, how was that like? Uh, <clears throat> so before we played the final table, uh, let me go back to sleep. Before we played the final table, there were some sponsors that came, uh, they approached me and they said, Jerry, we, we would like for you to, um, to wear our cap and our, our, our logos and our shirts, everything, and we would compensate you for that. That's it. And then, uh, well, I don't know anything about this, so let me think about it first. And they said, well, you would be very happy with the figure that we that we propose. The way to agent, there's a Chinese agent, public agent, not from San Francisco, Hey, Jerry, my name is Oliver Say, and I'd like to be your agent. I'd like to propose an agreement between you and me and represent you because uh, there's a, I noticed that there's a lot of uh, sponsors that want to sponsor you, and you're going to be making a lot of money. Yeah, the, the, what, kind of, what sort of money we're talking about? You said you're going to be very, very happy. I was just thinking about like 5000 10000 you know what I mean? And, he's, and then... So, how much are we talking about? While you're looking at about maybe minimum about 500,000, you know? 
you know, I didn't expect that at all. You know, so um, they, they are you you serious, right? This is, <laughs> you're not kidding me, right? They're like, no, I'm not kidding you. They, I signed with him, okay? So they're like, okay, just let me do all the talking and uh, I will negotiate the best deal, so uh, there was this poker site um, called Poker Stars, you know, you know, they love law, they love that, you know, Jerry, they could go wear a little logo, wear a cap and let us sponsor you. We'll give you $250,000. If you, if you win, if you win the event, we'll give you additional 250K on top of your winning. Okay, go ahead to Oliver, let's take it. And then Oliver said, no, 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 let's just wait. There'll be more money coming. <laughs> I said, I couldn't sit still. I was like, this can't be real. This is so surreal. And then, you know, they leave maybe like an hour later. So there's another one called um, Party Poker. They're like, oh, you're like, they offered me 500000 I couldn't believe it. So we turned that one down. We said, we would think about it. And then finally, Full Tilt Poker Law, they like, offered me $1 million. If I... If I had bust out at ninth place, I would have taken home a hundred thousand dollars just by by wearing that. But she could bust out, let's say eighth place, I would make two fifty. Seventh place would be three fifty. Sixth place would be four hundred thousand, and so on and so forth. But if I had won, I would make one million on top of the eight point two five. So we signed. So. <clears throat> Just take it. What? Why are you? Just sign and take the deal. You know, good thing they want to know the pay. Um, good thing we have agents out there. You know, and there are bad and good agents, but there are some very, very good agents out there that look uh, look out for you. So. Uh, I was very blessed to have Oliver on my side and he negotiated the best deal to go. But uh, winning the World Series of Poker was uh, life-changing. It was a blessing. Um, it was so unreal at that time. Even if you know, 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 yeah. So anyway. I'm just blah, 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 going. No. No, I think I think just what you're sharing is so amazing. I couldn't even imagine, like, being in your shoe and, like, having that amount of sponsors coming to approach you and all those offers. It must be – it must feel so surreal but amazing all at the same time. So I couldn't even imagine um, what that would feel like. So thank you for sharing that. I know when you and when you had talked to Callie and I, when you talked about it, I know we both were just like, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. I did want to um, jump in a little bit. I know that, you know, you had shared that you, some of your winnings went into some charities. Can you talk a little bit about why you selected those specific charities? Thank you for asking me that, uh, Olivia. Um, mm -hmm. So before I went to the World Series, I made a promise to God. You know, I pray and I say, "Go ahead, I watch you, dear." You the good thing now, go some more ten percent of my winning, more donate to pay for children's charity, dear. Number one, go move five million here. Number two, go do things that as a kid, go into the army. Ah, to chip la, more more more, down down ya. So go some more five million more. So I chose uh, Make a Wish Foundation. And I did some research into it. Uh, Make a Wish Foundation. Ying part of it, you know. Uh, and what uh, Wow. Um, I was able to take my put to me on side. Lord, what is the word? I did I didn't, I didn't sponsor them directly, but the let us say her wish now, the lots of cost story, who part, who donate, or make a wish now, la shown that do a good job, la who's a don't do a good job. That really made my day. Or a mother that was uh, staying at the Ronald McDonald house, uh, that watching her kid going through chemotherapy because of leukemia, 
you know, uh, thank me when I visited a Ronald McDonald house, Lao uh, Kuchok, that also really made my day. So, and finally, so I made, I donated 250,000 to Dao um, Make-A-Wish, 250 to um, uh, the Ronald McDonald house, and another 250,000 to feed the children. Uh, based on local research, I feed the children. So, uh, that's the main reason why I chose to donate to those three uh, children's charities, yes. So then after your, um, after your victory, what, what did you, what were your first thoughts? Like, what were you going to do with the money? Like, were you going to retire? What, like, do, what happened? Actually, so after I won, I, uh, after I won, my dream, my childhood dream came to me, you know, to own a restaurant. So what did I have to do? That wow, now is the time for me to. Uh, are you guys still there? You guys look like you guys are. You guys froze. We're still here, Jerry. Me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I, what I did was I bought my my wife's a new car. Uh, that was the first thing that I bought, uh, and I bought her a car, and then uh, <clears throat> I paid some of my father's bills. Uh, live with your brother, so let me help them follow here. Tell the bill that they know they could hello you. Uh, I bought a home in my there, uh, as you know, okay. Who uh, who they decided we believe a lot restaurant, so that, that's I just decided to make my childhood dream come true, and I did it. I didn't know anything about cooking sushi or how to roll a sushi, but I, you know, I, I took I with and took a uh, you know a couple of classes at the local um, uh, IT school um, and uh, I paid a little bit of money to a local chef to show me how to make the sauce and then I kind of like just like craft it the way that I want you know the sauce and everything I tweak it a little bit here and there to get to the taste that I want and I experiment with the customers and they try to put me and I did what they believe in all these two. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the restaurant. So do you have just the one restaurant right now um, in Fresno or do you have other restaurants as well? And then maybe you can tell us a little bit about those restaurants. Yeah, so the first one I opened was not a Merced of Pocket Aids. I actually named that, that restaurant. Like, uh, so, um, because I won the World Series with, with Pocket Aids, which is two Aids. So, we get name the restaurant, uh, I did Pocket Aids, and that's it. And then, what about, uh, I was doing it for like 11 years, and I opened Luna to Vegas. And uh, for a couple of years, they could have more than a job more here. They could have a lot They could have a lot more set. They could have a lot more set. They I was driving here from Madeira to, to Merced, like almost 11 years. So, I decided to walk. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm getting older and uh, getting sleepier when driving. <laughs> and so I decided to um, not to do that anymore. So I opened Shoku in Fresno. So to answer your question, this is the only restaurant that I have at, at this point. Yes. And so if anyone is in the Fresno area, please check out Jerry's restaurant. I know I see all the pictures that you post up and it looks like really good. And I love sushi. So I'm definitely going to make sure that um, I stop by there when I'm in the area. Um, and so the last thing I wanted to talk about is the book that you have, which I have right here. So it's called All N and it's sort of this biography. Um, I, I know you, you also talked about um, uh, Thailand and Laos and in your family, which those are stories I really, really enjoy. And so um, where can people buy this book? And if they buy it, will they get an autograph? Yes, you can get that from Amazon. And uh, you know Amazon, yeah. Uh, I also like to add that you're giving one book away. I'm going to give one book away. So that's two, okay? 
and mine, I'm going to autograph it. So uh, you guys, whoever win today will get Epo, yeah, yeah, the net, 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 I will autograph it for you. But the second person that win my book, I will autograph that for you. And uh, I'll, I'll be more than happy to pay the postage and send it to you. Yeah, so I'm from Downton High School, Guru Neng. High School, obviously, my trip, my little bit on my childhood, uh, and my obviously my trip, my family's trip from Laos to Thailand, the refugee camp, uh, living in the slums of Nashville, Tennessee, and Kansas City, Kansas, uh, in the projects, you know, and uh, being very poor, my struggle through uh, high school and college, and uh, becoming a world champion. So, in a nutshell, just really about my life, but also touch a little bit on my, my father's life also. All right, so we are up in the hour. We really appreciate you being with us here today, Gary. Is there any last words that you have? I think that it's just, uh, you know, like super inspirational what you, you know, like done and been on the big screen and, and for people just to realize that um, just believing yourself and, and stepping into something that you're maybe unsure of or know that, you know, you're you're amongst people that know more than you and have been in the game for such a long time. But yet, like you stay there and you prevail and, and you're able to, you know, just be just as good. So any last words for our audience? Thank you so much, uh, Kelly and Olivia, for having me on your show. I, I, I truly appreciate it and giving me the opportunity to share Jopi Da, Nia Jopi Da, Pujapi Da, Punta Yushada. The motto in my life is um, meaning everybody. Um, they live, but they don't really live. You know, they're just staying alive. They don't really live. So really live your life and follow your dreams. And that can only start with a positive thinking, okay? A thought is something that can lead to a habit. And uh, the more things that you do that turns into habit, a lot habit, lot become a habit, like they a lot more New lot or got called character, like you know, and your character will take you to your destiny. So, so everything begins with a thought, and just try to be positive with the people around you. Whatever you do, many people have big dreams, but they don't dream big. So I encourage all of you to really. Uh, it's okay to have a lot of dreams, but you gotta dream very very big in order to achieve what you dream. So. Uh, with that said, we call back to Hong Kong. Don't shut up. Don't worry about no not here. They share the yacht on day now. You need to do it. So, for friends, no, 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 but with that hope, hope is a good thing. Sometimes hope is the only thing that you have in life. So keep 